Okay. So here I have a set of carburetors. These are off of an early 90s FZR600. I'm going to go through the complete overhaul procedure. Sorry, not complete overhaul. Don't, um, yeah, the complete overhaul would be completely taking them apart individually, removing these screws on the side, separating each of the. That's a pain. I've done that before. Um, and to successfully clean them, you don't have to take them apart that far. I'm going to go over the steps in the video to. Um, with hopefully um, enough information to where anybody can do it, even if they don't know about, even if they don't know about repair, motorcycle, anything. So I'm not going over the steps to get them off of the bike. These aren't the ones that I currently have on my bike. The ones that I had, these were on it originally, on my uh, my FZR. But I have a video about the aftermarket, not aftermarket, it's uh, it's, they're, they're larger carburetors but they're from a YZF600 so um, they're newer, it's from an 04 YZF600 yeah, watch the other video, I'll, I'll put a link up to uh, to allow people to click on that and jump to it uh, link in the description too I guess if, yeah but the tools that I'm going to use for, I also, uh, um, actually I also have a set of late 90s what, uh, FZR600 carburetors, which um, I'll talk about those a little bit too, the, the differences that I, that I noticed between these early 90s and the late 90s ones. My late 90s ones are also California model. These aren't California model, these are just regular. So. And the way you can notice if your California model or not would be in the VIN. Um, if you wanted to run your VIN, I'm sure there's a VIN decoder type thing online. Um, there's There are for other manufacturers, other car manufacturers. And so the tools that you need, I was in the middle of, I was in the middle of saying something. Oh, or your electrical harness. Uh, you can, um, yeah, you, you would have to look up into the book to find a more detailed. I, that's that's kind of going beyond the scope of this video, but my the tools that I'm going to use in the video are the tools that, that I have that I use on most carburetors. Uh, for, for these, I put these, I had to drill out my screws that hold in the float bills. So, Actually, you don't have to get these, but um, they're actually they, they'll make it easier on the next person to take it, that takes the carburetors apart. Um, I've already started taking off some of the screws on this side. But this eight millimeter, I'm using that, but you don't have to get it eight millimeter deep socket. Uh, but for the inside, we're taking off the um, emulsion tube, emulsion tubes, and the jets. I think one of the jets. Uh, it's a quarter inch. This is six millimeter. A quarter inch uh, is is about the same size, but you would um, use that one with care. But most likely, you would want to use six millimeter. So six millimeter is the way to go. Use that. Okay, I have my trusty screwdriver. I really like this one because it's a you can convert it to T-handle. So my Phillips. Um, your screws that hold in these. Um, I say yours because it's not mine. Your your screws that hold in these are Phillips, and it's actually JIS, which is Japanese Industrial Standard bit, which is different from the American. This is a P2 Phillips bit, but it works fine. Um, I've actually gotten negative feedback from people because I, I don't know I guess they're just being a jerk or something but um, they're like well you can't use P2 Phillips bit because it's you know the screw heads actually JIS Japanese industrial standard and that was the first time I heard of that I've never stripped out a screw using a t-handle screwdriver on carburetors I've never stripped out a, a screw using this the t-handle screwdriver this allows you to put a lot of force behind it of course you have to hold it really easy, really really hard but um, you basically just press down and turn while you're pressing down. So 
your chances of stripping the screw are very very low so this is far better than a regular Phillips screwdriver so I would suggest getting one of these uh, uh, some carburetors you need the uh, to get the, the emulsion tube out you'll need this like the 5 these 5 sixteenths is uh, almost identical to 8 millimeter but use it with care because it's 8 millimeter inside the carburetor if that is what it calls for same thing between quarter inch and, and 6 millimeter and then I have my little customized screwdriver that I shave down the sides of it because they'll usually they'll kind of flare out a little bit right about there so I have this custom screwdriver that I just put on the grinder grind it down and my what I, oh yeah actually most important thing I use these this is a um, you can get these for 99 cents the new ones this is an old guitar string and it's the best thing that I've found to clean out the jet um, use a guitar string it it's worked every time with the exception of the little EX250 Ninja which I don't, actually I don't even know if it's called a Ninja but I, I've worked on a couple of those and I have a video about it um, but this is a 10 gauge string so it's a 10, 10 hundredths of an inch I believe um, or 10 sorry 10 thousandths of an inch It'd be one hundredth of an inch and it's actually too fat to go through the EX250 strings but this isn't an EX250 this is FCR600 so why am I talking about that um, another thing I did that you might have to do and talk about that first and you don't want to turn these upside down like I'm doing if you just I, these were taken off a long time ago and I know they're absolutely void of fuel so there's no fuel inside of them devoid of fuel there's no fuel inside of them but what I had to do I had to drill out my little EPA caps, the Environmental Protection Agency. I think they mandate that you have to put, they require that you put these caps in. Not you, but they require that the manufacturer puts these caps in. And this is one that I drilled out. It's just a cap. As you can see, it's, and this one is about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. So I took my drill and a drill bit. I drilled down into it. And I kept pulling it out every like 10 seconds or so of drilling into it. It's a brass, it's a brass cap. I kept pulling it out every about, about every 10 seconds of drilling into it until I started to see a little hole appear at the bottom, meaning that I'm almost through. Because I don't want this to go all the way through and risk damaging my little, the little head on the uh, the idle air adjustment screw. So after I drilled that through, and I, I matched up. The drill bit. This doesn't have a size on it. It's about an eighth, maybe three sixteenths. Actually, I think it's about an eighth drill bit. But I, I made sure that it was the same size as the, uh, as this wood screw that I put into it. Nothing touched the idle air screw. Um, didn't damage the head in any way. I drilled through it. Didn't make it all the way through the cap. And then I put this wood screw in by hand until I could see the, uh, the cap spinning. And then I just clamped some vice grips on it and pulled it out. So it's not exactly easy to get out, and that's they make it like that because they don't want people adjusting the air fuel ratio. And then now you've got people riding around with bikes that uh, they, they get bad gas mileage and pollute the environment. So first things first, or I guess <laughs> first things eleventh, I guess, because this video has been going about ten minutes, and now I'm getting to the first things. So. It's very common for you to go to start your bike after it's been sitting over winter and this slide is stuck. On the other side of this slide is a slide diaphragm and you want to, I always make it a point to remove these first before turning them upside down, before moving them around because you get fuel on these, it's not a good idea. Um, fuel or carburetor cleaner for that matter. You don't want any kind of chemical on the slide diaphragm. Slide diaphragm is just a thin piece of rubber. Um, as the vacuum, as the engine creates a vacuum, it sucks through here, and it ends up creating it ends up creating a vacuum on this side. So um, 
the since there's a vacuum and since there's a diaphragm, the slide raises. Well, after they've been sitting over winter, even if you drain out your fuel, it's very common for these to get stuck. Uh, probably half the carburetors I've worked on, um, and I've worked on a lot of carburetors, about half of them that I've worked on, these have been stuck. So you can, without even having to pull the whole, like all of the, everything off, like undo the throttle cables and uh, undo the clamps that hold the carburetors on to the, to the engine. Like what I've started doing recently is whenever I look at it, it's, it's can I slide this up? And which I think it was something like that. Yeah. So these two were stuck when I started playing with them, trying to slide them up, and just just this little bit of pressure, a couple pounds of pressure, trying to trying to slide it up, maybe two or three pounds of pressure, trying to slide it up. And then the well, these two were stuck, and since I figured these two were stuck, these two were most likely stuck too. So I um, waited to shoot the video to see for sure, and sure enough, yeah, this one it doesn't want to move. So eventually, while you're while you're pushing on it, it'll kind of break loose. So now it's good. I don't know if you can hear the the, the suction. But you can actually hear the like uh, with the microphone, with this little microphone I'm using, a little USB mic. But and that one's a little, a little rough, but it's not stuck. So, but yeah, I mean, it's if these are stuck, your your bike's not gonna start because it's not gonna. And if it does start, it's not gonna you're not gonna be at an idle because it, the air fuel ratio is not gonna be right because these aren't even trying to move because the slide stuck. It's not the the vacuum um, being created on the other side of the slide diaphragm isn't pulling up the slide like it's supposed to. I've actually polished these before. I've taken them out and uh, like been very careful, of course, to not get the polish on the on the slide diaphragm. But man, it was I noticed it idled a lot better. It had more of a, a poppy sound, like you can hear it. The uh, you can hear the exhaust more distinctly. Um, which I thought was interesting, but all I did was go over it with I think like thousand grit sandpaper, just the plastic part. I went over it with thousand grit sandpaper lightly, and then I went over it with like a um, industrial strength adhesive, uh, not adhesive, um, industrial strength uh, like rubbing compound, and just polished it out. Didn't make it shiny, but it made it really smooth, and uh, yeah, it was it was nice. So I was kind of glad that I did that, but um, yeah. So as I said. First thing, first things 11th. I'm gonna take off this. Uh, I'm gonna start working with this side. So I'm just gonna use my little T-handle screwdriver. Okay. And I'm keeping a little bit of pressure on this, on this screwdriver. Not on the screwdriver, on the, um, <laughs> I always say things wrong. Every one of my videos, I say something wrong, but I'm not, that's not even what I'm talking about. And I don't realize it sometimes until after I shoot the video. But I have a little bit of pressure on this diaphragm cap. So I am just unscrewing the screw. The reason I'm doing that is there's a spring under here that pushes the slide back down whenever that cylinder is, uh, not on the intake stroke. So take it up carefully. Sometimes the bottom of this cap, the diaphragm sticks to the cap. So this little spring. I like getting these out of the way. This one's kind of stuck to something. Why is it stuck? Huh, that was interesting. But yeah, so that one was a little bit stuck. So take this out, set it aside. It doesn't have to go back in the same carburetor that it um, that it came out of. Never pull this out, this slide diaphragm and slide. Never pull it out by grabbing this, the diaphragm and pulling it up that way. Um, these are, they're not extremely delicate, but you, it's, 
I don't know, it's better just to not touch it at all, basically. You don't want to risk damaging it or tearing it because, yeah, but my uh, pinky is small enough to where I can, I can pull this out without touching it, you know, just by sticking my finger on the inside. So, and then pull this guy out. So, what I read was the difference between the uh, the California model um, what I read was the difference between the California model carburetors and the and the regular non California model carburetors is this this needle and the clip is in a different spot so I don't know if that's 100% true and I don't want to risk opening up the other carburetors and having both the needles out and getting confused which one goes where and then I spend 10 minutes trying to figure it out so it's what was in my little Haynes book my little Haynes manual um, when I looked up the pilot jet stuff or the, um, the idle adjustment jet but take all of these out these uh, slide diaphragm take all of them out get them far away from the the carburetors where you're going to be doing the cleaning because you don't want to get carburetor spray on them you don't want to get fuel on them if you still have fuel in your carburetors and actually if you do have still in your fuel, still have fuel in your carburetors you don't want these to be upside down you want to keep them the the diaphragm side on top where fuel isn't going to somehow make its way down into them from floating from draining down so um, okay. so um, I pulled off all of the the diaphragm caps with the slide diaphragms and I, I set them set them to the side I actually set them on top of my little my little book a little FCR repair, repair manual just in case I got a uh, in case I forget the number of turns for the that idle air adjustment screw. Well, these actually these are the only carburetors I remember seeing like this of all the other ones that I've done. Uh, they have this little O-ring around this part in the choke assembly. So there's like a little port that goes to the carburetors for the choke. And they have these little O-rings that when you pull the choke it changes the uh, the level that the Actually, I shouldn't try to explain it because I don't fully know everything about how the choke assembly works in these because sometimes it's an enriching assembly where it, it enriches the air-fuel mixture and other times it's a choke, like it's a choke setup, so like it actually chokes the uh, engine a little bit. But So it's not always a choke lever. Sometimes it's an, and most times it's an enriching, I guess more of an enriching lever. But, um, yeah, these little O-rings come off really easily. So this one came off. I didn't try to pop the other ones off, but I do want to set it aside so that it stays there. I don't want to risk cracking these. It's Napa, not Napa. I, Napa doesn't really have these, is what I was going to say. But the two thoughts that I mixed together there was um, the Yamaha dealership locally doesn't have... Um, they don't have a large inventory of FZR parts so I think they told me their cutoff on parts that they have in stock is about 10 years but as I said these are 8 millimeter. these are the screws I got at the local hardware store um, because they have a hex head and I didn't want to uh, I think I had to take a vice grip to the other ones because they were so stuck like I couldn't actually get them out with the uh, with the t-handle screwdriver so at the risk of stripping them and making them matter worse, I just clamped vice grips onto the side and and turned it up to make it easier for myself. Since these used to run on my bike all the time, I just put this in. Try to make my stuff easier to work on. Okay, and if you, it's it's kind of common, not common, common. Um, it's possible, is what I meant to say, that these little O rings will wear out on this overflow. And you get a little bit of leak there. This actually doesn't feel that solid. But 
set this aside. Look inside of it. These are kind of dirty. So I'm going to work on getting that out. That little buildup of gunk right there. And this other stuff is just some of that Hawaiian red dirt. So, yeah. But, I'll clean these up. And uh, I usually use Q tips. And actually, that's one thing I didn't get when I was setting up for this video. I'll have to pause it and get some Q tips whenever I start using them. But, it's uh, they're good just to scrub with, and it's not something that's gonna like really scratch up the insides and spray with a little carburetor carburetor cleaner in there where that big build up area is. Sometimes you'll see a bunch of a gunk built up inside of these. So, all right, but now we're on to the good stuff. Um, I'm only gonna do um, one of these carburetors, but I pulled the float bowl off of both of these just to. All right, so this is where the fuel sits. This is the side that the fuel sits. The other side, kind of, is where the air is. Like the air does its thing. And the vacuum that's created on that side of the slide diaphragm. This side is where the fuel is controlled. It goes into the jets. Now, I'm usually pretty careful with these little, these little float pins. Some carbur, if you're watching this for whatever reason, and you don't have FZR carburetors, some of them, some of these have plastic. Uh, why isn't this coming out very easy? Some of these have plastic instead of metal, and it's not a plastic pin that goes through. It's just built into the like this uh, this float seat that I have my middle finger on, and the float. They're kind of built together, so the uh, you would have to pry the plastic away to get it apart, which I don't recommend because plastic plastic's not very forgiving when you start prying it. But I usually put this out of the way. Um, I try to not have any dirt on them because I don't want anything to hesitate to prevent my float from moving the way it's supposed to. So I'm just gonna set this aside. A little clean area. Okay. So I'm not gonna go over in this video adjusting the floats. As, uh, the way I clean them, I've never actually had to. Some carburetors, like I believe my YZF600 ones that I have, there's a screw that's on the side that holds this in. So the screw screws into the inside of the carburetor, like underneath the float bowl. It screws in. And I say underneath the float bowl, uh, meaning just meaning that you you can't see it by looking uh, without taking the float bowl off. So this little screen kind of gets gunked up sometimes if you don't have a good fuel filter, and it'll pop off, and you can spray some carburetor cleaner in it. This one looks pretty good. I might spray it anyway, but it's it's actually not bad. So I'm just gonna set this aside. So this is why I showed the screwdriver. Why I like it. This little screwdriver, like this is the one that I sanded the edges down on. So it fits in. Oh, it fits in other carburetors. Good, it doesn't fit in this one. I'll have to go sand it down a little bit more. But that's why I have the other little backup screwdriver. Um, basically, it's really good for slipping inside where you have like a little jet in there. So, so I'm not gonna have to use my screwdriver that I have here for. Yeah, oh, it's a little bit too tight. So, some carburetors are set up to where. There's a little shaft that the uh, the jets are down inside, so you'll need a, a fat fat blade screwdriver, fat tip screwdriver, but um, it's got to have narrow sides, so that's why I customized mine. And you'll you want to remember the where these jets went. Um, the fatter one is the one that's in line with with this uh, this screw that holds on the emulsion tube so you can you can actually unscrew this and you can take this whole little assembly off which I, I like that the FZR carburetors are like this 
it's one more reason that I like the FZR carburetors. It actually makes it easier to to work on. Um, because I, I like to stick a little guitar my little guitar string down inside of it. So this is a little six millimeter. That's very loose already. So that comes off. It's got a little washer underneath it. it came off together. Set it down. Let's kind of wiggle this a little bit. Wiggle is a technical term. And so you get a little gasket on the bottom. You can replace that if you want to. I never do. Uh, now, this I believe is usually what holds in. Like if you wanted to take this slide out, like where that, um, where the slide. And we'll get this a little bit more. Yeah. So you can actually take out, you spin this brass screw. Which it looks hard to safely unscrew it. You don't have to take it out, but yeah. So now that these jets are out, so this is this is as far as I'm going to disassemble the uh, the carburetors, with the exception of this. At this point, it's just cleaning everything. So what I always do with these, actually, before I unscrew this, I should say this. So considering all of these caps are unscrewed, all these little caps that I was talking about earlier that have the, uh, they kind of, they regulate the uh, the air fuel ratio. Why couldn't I think of that? So they regulate the air fuel ratio and they keep it at the, the they make sure that it's at the ideal uh, when it's idling. So what I do before I unscrew these to take them out, I'll gently tighten them down and I'll count the half turns. So that's half one half two half so right now it's at two and a half turns um, now what I'm gonna do is because these are supposed to be set at three at three turns out according to my little Haynes manual and these were at two and a half turns out so I'm gonna take these out it's going to be a little o-ring at the bottom and a spring and all of that stuff so the spring keeps tension on the, the threads of it so that it doesn't adjust but they still adjust on their own I don't want to turn these over to get it out looks like I'm going to have to okay so as I said the spring. Sometimes these little tips break off. I don't know if it's from age or if people just don't know what they're doing, but I like to clean them. So, but there should be an o ring at the bottom of this. There usually is an o ring at the bottom of this spring, and most likely it is still inside. So, I'm not going to try to get it out. But, um, yeah, so I clean this, make sure the tip is nice and, you know, it's, because how can it, how can it effectively regulate the, uh, the idle air fuel ratio if it's dirty? So even if it's a little bit off, then it's, you know, kind of want it to idle as best you can. So what I always do, since there's no way to count how many turns there are from the top threads when you first start threading it down, I'll gently screw it down all the way. I say gently because you don't want it to like once it hits the bottom. Because the spring, it's not hard to compress a spring. You'll feel it getting harder and harder to spin. And then finally it'll just stop. So now it's stopped. 
I have it bottomed out all the way and I didn't crank down on it to try to, to try to bottom it out so now I'm like right now I'm looking at it and I see the orientation of the top of the screw and the, uh, the direction the head is facing so I'm going to count in half turns that's half one half two half three book said three these were at two and a half or this one was at two and a half now after I drill these other these others out you don't have to do this right now when the floats out I'm just doing it because um, I kinda wanna finish this video and cover everything but um, yeah so right now it's at three turns and whenever I do these other ones I wanna make sure I put those at three turns also so right now I'm gonna go through this with my guitar string wherever it is okay there it is so carburetor cleaner is close by there so all I'm doing spray a little bit spray a little bit I'm not even spraying full blast I'm just getting just a little bit of carburetor cleaner in there just so that I can poke the needle through tiny hole this is the one this one this first one that I'm sticking it through on the, the top this is the one where it's got a little jet inside of it that I can't get out there's not a screw head on it I actually don't know how they put it in there might be pressed in or something okay there we go so oh wait no that is the one that had the jet in it the one that's below that's one that didn't have a jet in it so yeah I'm just poking it through swirling it around Sometimes it's a little hard to go through because there might be some buildup. Looks like that. So you can see like where the, the carburetor cleaner started to come out after I sprayed it, which means it is going all the way through. But I like to use it usually poke through from both directions because they uh, that way you get all this stuff out. After I poke through it twice. Right, well, I guess once from each direction, which adds up to twice. Then spray through, and you'll see a little stream come out. I don't know if you can see that on the video, if the camera picked it up, but the carburetor cleaner sprays out the bottom whenever I spray through it like that, which is what you want. You want to make sure it's getting clean. And just a little bit of carburetor cleaner on this seal isn't going to hurt it. Uh, I believe the long-term exposure of the part to carburetor cleaner will expand the uh, the rubber, unless they call it carburetor. It actually, it actually smells a lot like brake clean, and I've always thought that they were about the same thing. But I am not going to try to use uh, one in place of the other, even though they smell the same. It can be made with different mixtures of stuff. So, using my little guitar string, same thing going through that and I should see a little stream of carburetor cleaner you don't want to point this at your face I mean like not directly at your face but what I'm saying is you don't want to be like looking at like if my camera is the eye you don't want to be going like this because what happens is you spray in and the carburetor cleaner will spray back at you get in your eye that's happened to me more times than I would care to admit um, when I feel really dumb when it happens so this is the main jet hole the main jet goes in this one that I just stuck in with the carburetor with the with the string I like to stick the string in anyway just to make sure there's no blockages nothing needs nothing in there but you can look through this and you can see that there's nothing in there so get that nice and clean now onto the jets. You don't have to clean this. This doesn't matter. This is just a screw that holds the, the emulsion tube on. And the emulsion tube is inside here. Or sorry, the emulsion tube is... Yeah. Um, anyway. The... Yeah, so I cleaned this out. This is good. I went over all the little jet holes. Jets are here. So this is 
this is the idle jet and you can look through and you can see light on the other side I don't know if you can in this video I don't think the, the camera is focusing on it it doesn't look it is but still it's that what I do is I just put the jet in I spin it on my finger that cleans the walls on the inside of the jet better than anything else that I've ever used so and this one's nice and smooth rolling on it So sometimes I spray carburetor cleaner in first then do it other times I just I just go for it either way this cleans it gets it nice and solid on the inside I even do the same thing to the main one the main jet just to clean the the wall on the inside so. Oh, uh, you know what? There's a little washer. I've got to pull that. I just saw the washer that's in view of the video. Actually, right between my thumbs right now. There's a washer that goes on that. On that spray, on the, uh, the idle air adjustment screw. So, and you can look through it. You can see a nice little hole. And you look through the idle jet, see a nice little hole. Again, I don't know if you can see those on the video. Sorry about that. But my cheap little eBay camera does not autofocus. And this is the seat, float seat. All I'm doing on this, you can spray through from here. And you'll see carburetor cleaner come out the mesh. Little mesh area. So, I've used compressed air before too, just to blow this out. It evaporates fast enough. It doesn't really matter. As long as you, as long as you use something to get the old fuel out. So, but that's it. Now I just go back into assembling everything on the float side. But for right now in the video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip way ahead. and here so you can get like a t-shirt you can run it through here and move any excess any any dirt or dust or whatever else would be in here so get a q-tip clean out this little area inside here where my where my finger is make sure it's nice and clean and then uh, be very careful but do the same thing with the slide well, you want to have that surface clean so that the slide moves well, so that it slides with as little resistance as it possibly can so you can see where it sits most of the time there's this little ring so So this is a position that it sits in whenever it's not running. The diaphragm is the position that it sits in whenever it's not running. Okay. So I usually have a t-shirt around so that I can really clean this off good, but it's not that hard just to take your thumb, run it over the plastic, Try not to really pull on the uh, diaphragm. Again, I just have my, my finger stuck inside. So, see there's a little bit of buildup right there. And then a little crease. Same thing on this side. So, yeah. Don't use carburetor cleaner on this unless you are extremely careful and I would even say even if you're extremely careful I wouldn't get it 
near this diaphragm. These diaphragms are um, about a hundred bucks a piece. Now, like nowadays, like you're you're almost better off buying another set of carburetors on eBay instead of trying to find diaphragms because a hundred bucks a piece, four hundred bucks for all of them. If you replace one because you mess it up, you're going to be better off replacing all of them because they're all going to have the same same wear on them with the exception of one that's going to be brand new so they're all going to be creased like this except for one and uh, that difference in that one cylinder would put a little bit of a hamper on performance and and you would um, you would notice a difference so the bike would probably shake a little bit at idle or higher RPMs just because of the the differences in power produced by each cylinder and how one cylinder is producing more power than the other three are individually so, because um, it's operating more efficiently, more smoothly. But yeah, to go over this, um, it's sometimes you'll see a little bit of oil build up on your diaphragm. It's just you know it's the crankcase vent that comes out of the engine that goes into the airbox. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of oil coming out of that uh, as the bike gets older. I know. Um, Jixers are really common for getting a lot of oil in the airbox. So, so yeah, um, that's about it. I'm just gonna put it back together after this. It's the inside of the uh, the California model carburetors that I talked about earlier. They're actually a lot cleaner than they're dirtier on the outside, but they're cleaner on the inside. But that I don't think that has anything to do with uh, with how they're made. But they still they look the same. I'm looking at this, I, this is the float assembly. It's got the same thing, a little metal pivot pin. Everything's the same. The way the float seat sits in, carburetor. These are clean. I haven't even tried to. Well, they did come off of a running bike, so it's not like I'm. I'm, I'm used to cleaning ones that are. Uh, they've been sitting for a long time. And then there's uh, some. So I'm comparing that to these so it's the same angle that I had in the other ones same thing they look completely identical on the inside both Makuni carburetors different part number slightly um, but they are the same oh sorry with the exception of and I don't know if these if this originally came on mine because mine has these but, so this is the float from mine Maybe not. So it does have this little metal. Um, it does have this little rubber tube, or it does feel like metal, or hard plastic. Can't move it really, but it does have this. Um, no idea what that does and why it's only on two carburetors and it's not on the other. So it's only on these two this little bar going across it's only on these two it's not on these these are just like mine you put them back on with one hand ha. success I just put two float balls on at the same time with one hand um, that's not impressive I don't know what is but look at this and then uh, there's just a little dents in the like where those would be where these little tubes would be so I don't know but either way I mean, it could be like a little like a little way to balance the uh, to keep the both the carburetors having the same amount of fuel in them but I don't know why they would be on these two and not on these two so um, if you know what they are leave a suggestion leave a response and let me know what it is because I'm kind of curious now but that's the only difference I can see aside from somebody might have done this. These have been worked on before because these caps have been drilled out, as you can see. Uh, it had these four millimeter hex screw, hex head um, screw instead of like what I did. And I used my little eight millimeter screw. So. They look the same. Um, 
everything else seems identical. Choke setup and all the other stuff. But I just thought I would run the video again and show that little difference.